Christ is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter and welcome to worship at Avondale Presbyterian Church where we worship the risen one with open hearts and open minds. There are just a few things that I want to mention to you for today. First, we will be celebrating communion today, so feel free to take a moment to prepare your own elements so that you can enjoy the grace which is found at God's table. Also, I want to share a special thank you to Cheryl Judd McGee for providing our worship artwork during Lent and her team that prepared the Easter banner for today. If you are a guest with us today, we welcome you to Avondale and are so glad to have you here with us. If you are interested in learning more about Avondale and the Presbyterian Church, we invite you to attend our Next Steps class being held virtually on April 20th and 27th. If you, have none, if you have not done so, please visit our church website and complete the Take Next Step form to be contacted by a member of our outreach ministry team. And it is with great excitement that we welcome two new babies in March and look forward to welcoming two more in April. In your worship email, you will find the individual family announcements and sign-up links to help with filling a baby blessing basket with necessary goodies like diapers and wipes. Just a reminder that items are due to the office this coming Wednesday. And thank you for your participation. That is all that I have, so let us join our hearts as we celebrate the one who brings life out of death, the one who is the rock of our salvation, for he died and rose again for you and for me. Come, let us open our worship with the call to worship you find before you. On this glorious Easter day, we have come to celebrate the greatness of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. On this great day, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Let us rejoice and sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. On this holy of days, the one whom we had thought to be dead has risen triumphant from the tomb. Let us rejoice, Alleluia. On this holy day, we celebrate our new life in the risen Christ. Through the death of Jesus, the weight of our sin has been lifted from us. Through this glorious resurrection, we have a life, a life that is eternal. Let us rejoice, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, let us praise the living God, for Christ is living, and so are we.
My friends, this is the day that we rejoice in God's redeeming love. Hear the truth. None of us are beyond reproach. Please join me as we lay before the risen Christ our guilt and frustration, and then take a moment for your own silent and personal prayers. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. Forgive our denial of our mortality, our hopelessness, and our sense of captivity. Set us free for the liberation of Jesus Christ, who was dead but lives among us. Help us trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may feel and know in our soul the joy of life abundantly given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Lord, in your mercy, may you hear our prayers. Friends, hear the good news. God has given us the gift of new life, of eternal life, and we give him praise for the gift of new beginnings, for the gift of forgiveness, and for the gift of reconciling love. All who are in Christ are indeed a new creation. Hallelujah. Amen. So as beloved children of God, let us not be strangers to one another, but family in Christ. Please join me as we greet each other with the peace of Christ. I invite you to take a moment to text someone maybe you haven't texted before and send them the peace of Christ, saying, may the peace of Christ be with you. And if you receive such a message, may you respond by saying, and also with you. Our scripture passage for today comes from Mark's Gospel, 
chapter sixteen, verses one through eight. Please listen for a word from the Lord. When the when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salomon bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, "Who will roll away the stump for us from the entrance to the tomb?" When they looked up, they saw. That the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back, and they entered the tomb. They saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But He said to them, "Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a bread. They lied to him. But go tell his disciples and Peter." That he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of God from the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
It was early in the morning. There was a lot of work to do. They couldn't do it yesterday because that had been the Jewish Sabbath, and so they wanted to get an early start. Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of James and Salome, gathered their provisions and set out for the garden. Their walk to the garden was different today. You know, they had been with Jesus up in Galilee area and had walked with Jesus and the disciples all the way to Jerusalem. They had been a part of of that triumphant parade on Palm Sunday and had walked walked into Jerusalem shouting with the others, Hosanna in the highest. But today, today their pace was slower. Their enthusiasm was gone. Duty was the source of their motivation now, not the anticipation of victory. Mary Magdalene knew where he was. She had seen him being laid to rest by Joseph of Arimathea and had watched as Joseph pushed the heavy stone into place. So she knew what they were going to find. They knew that they had a problem before they even got there. Over and again, they they sighed and they asked, Who will roll away the stone for us? Who? 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 What are we going to do? Life certainly has its stones, doesn't it? Those things that block you from your goals, those things that appear too heavy to budge, those, those things that, that stop you in your tracks, that, that take you off course, the, those things that are sometimes put there by others, either intentionally or unintentionally, those things we put on ourselves, either intentionally or unintentionally. It doesn't take too much of an imagination to see how the the pandemic has been a huge stone for the whole world. This time last year, we were starting to feel shut in and shut out. The stones of fear and uncertainty, the, the stone of change and the stone of panic. I wonder if these were some of the same stones that these women in our text were experiencing. Their leader and teacher, who they had spent so much time with, who was supposed to be the, the new king of Israel, who was, who was going to free them from the Romans and unite Israel once again, this Messiah was gone. And could they have been experiencing the same emotional stones that we are facing? I dare say, though, that even before the pandemic, we were dealing with the stones of life. Wouldn't you agree? There was debt and addictions, stones of self-image, stones of perfection that we strive to show the world instead of the messy spots of our lives. We know what that is like here in Dilworth and Myers Park and South Charlotte, trying to keep up appearances, the right clothes, the right cars, the right lawns, Just this morning, I saw a chickadee fly up to our bird feeder and check out his reflection, made sure his feathers were were all in the right place, wiped wiped away a little smudge of sunflower seed that was on his beak. It reminded me of that old Billy Crystal skit from SNL where he says, it's better to look marvelous than to feel marvelous, and you look marvelous. Stones of pressure to be a success parents and teenagers know this all too well. Got to get Johnny in the right classes and the right extracurricular activities so he can make the right friends, so he can get into the right colleges and get the right job. Wow, that sounds like a lot of decisions to make. What, what grade is Johnny going into? Oh, he starts preschool next fall. Feels like there's pressure all around, doesn't it? But there are other stones, aren't there? Stones of betrayal and brokenness in our relationships. Stones of racism and sexism in our culture that, that impede the journey for, well, for so many. Stones of quality education and economic divides that, that have been major concerns for this church for years. Yes, I suppose the stones of life have been with us for some time. Not just the past year. So what are the stones for you? 
The survey statistics said that we have never been more overworked, more anxious, more stressed out, more burned out, more addicted, more isolated and lonely than ever before in history of modern society. And that was before COVID-19. The truth is that we are a people, a people who carry burdens, we are a people who struggle with one challenge after another. We are a people who experience grief and loss, and we wonder, who? Who will roll the stone back for us? Who? But the word of God doesn't leave us in our anxiety and our despair, does it? The word of God lives on for us, for you and for me, and it brings us some good news. In fact, I, as I was preparing for today, I came across a minister who said about the women in our text, he said, isn't it interesting that they are so worried about a problem they don't even have? They are fretting about a dead end that doesn't exist. And he's right. I mean, when they arrive, there's no stone in their way. All that anxiety, all that stress, all that energy, all that worry, and there wasn't even a problem. God had already taken care of it. There's this wonderful story in the Bible where an, an entitled young man is, is all bent out of shape because he is ready to live life, to experience all the excitement that is out there. But there's this stone, he thinks, a, a stone that is preventing him from, from really living life. That stone is his father. So he asks for an advance on his money from his inheritance. And off he goes. And he has one adventure after another until, uh, well, until the party ends. <laughs> and the party always ends. And he finds himself working in a pigsty just to survive. No good Jewish boy would be caught dead in a pig pen. He's reached rock bottom, and he thinks, my father's servants live better than I am in this situation. Maybe he'll take me back. And so he starts making his way home, but he's worried, worried about this new stone, a stone of acceptance or forgiveness, and he starts practicing his apology. Father, I have sinned against you and God. Oh, Father, I have sinned against you and God. Oh, Father. You know, sometimes even the anticipation of the stone is heavier than the stone itself. Have you ever noticed that? Because when he gets to the homestead, there's his father giving you my big bear hug. And there is no stone to be found. It has been rolled away. Who will roll away the stone? God will. God will. God has and God always will roll the stones of our life out of the way to let Christ into your life. And just to make sure you, we understand this, there's a messenger standing there when the women arrive. And he says, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there's the place they laid him. But, but go, tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. You know, I find it interesting that the messenger said, go tell his disciples and Peter. Peter was one of the disciples. He was already included. So why single him out? And I wonder if it was because Peter was, well, was dealing with his own stone. He was feeling blocked from God because of his shame and his guilt of denying that he ever knew Jesus. And once again, we watch as that stone is removed by divine love and mercy and forgiveness. You know, I guess, I guess that's the Easter message, isn't it? 
the stones of these women's lives, the stones of Peter's lives, the stones of our lives are removed by the one, the one who has been resurrected. Death, you see, leaves stones in place, but the God of life and light removes those stones and offers us resurrection and salvation and reconciliation. And so the Easter message is to turn from death, Choose life, follow life, live life, for the stones of life are removed when we start worrying about them and allow God to move them. Oh, I know, I, I know it calls for trust. I know it, the story sounds a little crazy. Death to life, forgiveness, life ever after. But the other story? Every time I hear it, it, it sounds even crazier. The story of, of a world with, with phones in every pocket, with texting and emojis, with, with email, a, a world with apps for dating, where, where all you have to do is swipe left or right to meet someone, and you know about them through social media. And yet, so much loneliness, so much striving for perfection. There's no morning breath on the dating apps. There's no bad hair days on social media, just pressure for perfection. And the emptiness of whoever gets the most stuff wins and loneliness. In that story, death comes and stones get placed over the tombs. And that's it. End of story. That is the story that seems crazy to me. I don't know about you, but I want to hear a story, a story of hope and life, a story that reminds me of, of purpose and meaning, a story that, that when I am over my head, it tells me that there are others, others who know and care and encourage and bring me back when I wander into that crazy story. There's a place where you can hear that story, a place where you can learn to live that story. It's called the body of Christ, the church. And it has saved me so, so many times. This body, this church will tell me again and again that, that it's okay. It's going to be okay. This world is not about striving for perfection because we, well, we have all fallen short of the glory of heaven. This body, this church is about love and grace and acceptance, and mercy, and renewal, and resurrection. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please join me as together we offer the affirmation of faith you find before you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is here at this table that we experience the risen Christ. It is here at this table that God's grace for us is experienced, it is present for us. So it is this table that is not a Presbyterian table. This is not Avondale Presbyterian Church's table. This is the Lord's table. And all who come here in humility and in want are welcome at this table. In fact, it was on the night in which he was betrayed that he gathered with the disciples in the upper room. And after giving thanks, he took the bread and he broke it and said, this is my body, broken for you. Every time you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. And in a similar way, he took the cup and said, this cup represents the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. For it is every time that we eat this bread, every time that we drink from this cup, that we proclaim the saving grace of our living Lord until he comes again. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we give you thanks for the love that you have shown us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And we give you thanks for these gifts of bread and this cup, that they are for us the very real presence of your grace in our lives. And just as this bread and this cup nourish our bodies, may your Holy Spirit pour upon these elements that they would nourish our very souls so that we may be transformed in some mysterious way to be the people you have called us to be. And that as we go forth, we would share your love, your grace that you commanded us to give. For it's in Christ's holy name we pray, amen. My friends, these are the gifts of God for you and me, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Almighty God, through the rising of your Son from the grave, you broke the power of the grave. You broke the power of death and condemned death itself to die. We are awed by the amazing power you displayed in your triumph your triumph and humbled that your power is present to us at this table. By that same power, help us to identify in our lives all that should rightly die, those redundant relationships, those tired habits, those fruitless longings. Resurrect instead, resurrect in our lives faith and hope and love as surely you raised Jesus Christ from the grave. May you hear this prayer and the prayers that are written deep within our hearts 
as we offer together the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God tells us over and over in the Bible not to be afraid. Our gifts this morning are one way that we trust God, even in a world that keeps telling us to be afraid. We let go of thinking that we are on our own and live each day in a graceful dependence on God. I invite you to join me as we gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and in praise. Please join me as we offer together the prayer you find before you. Almighty God, by your grace, accept the harvest of our labor and the offerings of our lives in union with our risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen.
My friends, as you go forth from this sacred time, go with the truth that he is risen. He is risen indeed. And allow that truth to roll away the stones in your life and give you the hope of a life of our laughter. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's countenance watch over and give you peace now and forevermore in a world that has no end. Amen.